welcome back to my channel. My name is Natalie and today we are going to be talking about how to set up your beta fish tank. I made a video previously about a couple years ago um, doing this video but I got some of my information incorrect and it was my most popular video so I figured that I should like redo it I guess I don't know. <laughs> So yes, but before we get into that, I just wanted to say thank you all for having such amazing patience um, and coming back to my channel even though it's been a couple weeks to hopefully make it up to you guys. I am planning on uploading a video every single week in December and I know that's a lot for me to promise you guys, especially because I've promised so many things and never delivered. But um, right now it is actually... November 13th so I am getting a head start on filming so hopefully I keep my word and I upload a video every week in December it's like a Christmas celebration or a holiday celebration whatever you celebrate if you don't celebrate anything that's fine you're gonna be celebrating on my channel with new videos I don't know <laughs> okay so you want a beta fish or you already have a beta fish and you want to know how to properly set up a beta fish tank i hope that you would want to give your beta fish the best life it can have to start your beta fish tank the first thing you're gonna need is a tank so there's lots of different tanks out on the market you might have already seen a couple ones this is mine this is the aquion beta bow 2.5 aquarium um, I think it was about 30 or $40. It came with a filter and some other samples and stuff like that. Um, I don't use that filter anymore. It was a very bad filter, but I really liked the way that the tank looked. So I would say that the minimum gallon requirement for a beta fish is a 2.5 gallon tank. Um, there's some rumors going around that beta fish lived in puddles so they're able to live in small spaces or you might hear some other people say oh well I had a beta fish a couple years ago and I kept it in a small tiny bowl and it it lived for a long time um animals can survive um they can go through a lot of things but that does not mean that you're giving it the best life possible and if you want your beta fish to be happy and live a long life and be healthy I would say that the minimum gallon tank to get is a 2.5 gallon tank. If you have the space and the money for a fish tank bigger than that, I would definitely go and encourage you to purchase a tank bigger, maybe a 10 gallon tank. I know a lot of them keep beta fish in there. I definitely recommend that whatever tank you do purchase has a lid or a hood on it. Um, I don't really like tanks that have open spaces on top because a lot of dust and animal hair and debris can just fall in there and really, I don't know, like make your tank dirty or your beta fish could accidentally choke on something. Um, so I like to keep a hood on. Another thing that I believe that beta fish tanks should have is a filter. There's a lot of different benefits. My dog's going crazy. There are a lot of different benefits to having a filter in your tank. First and foremost, it definitely keeps your tank cleaner. Without a filter, I think you have to like clean it out once a day or something like that. Like once a day, once a week or something like that. It's, it's insane. The second thing to having a filter is it helps build up your cycle. So when all of the good bacteria sticks onto your filter cartridge, that's what helps keep the new water added in to like have good bacteria and cycled and stuff like that I don't know it's a it's a lot it also just helps keep out you know like animal hair and stuff that actually does end up in the tank so for example some dust and stuff might get through the food hole so that filter will definitely keep the water and stuff clean make sure that if you do buy your own filter for your own tank that it's the right size um, there's definitely different types of powers for different size tanks. So in, for example, if you had a 10 gallon tank, you would want a more powerful filter. If you have a smaller tank like mine, then you definitely want a less powerful filter. Um, the filter I'm using right now is a Tetra Whisper filter. Um, I definitely don't recommend it. It's not a good filter. Um, the suction cups are always falling off. I think I have like five suction cups on there now just to keep the filter in place. Um, the only reason I'm using it right now is because I didn't have any other filter to use um, 
it's just not the best quality filter it also produces a lot of air bubbles that I don't really like because it creates kind of like a bigger draft in the water I don't know Another thing that you're going to want to need is a thermometer and a heater. This is definitely necessary. Um, in my last video, I said that it wasn't necessary. I said like maybe in the winter you probably need it, but having a heater is really good for making sure that the temperature is always consistent. The heater that I have right now, I think is an Aquion heater. Um, it's trash. I bought it and um, I think it was like the cheapest one that I could find because I thought that I had a heater. So this was like a temporary one um it definitely doesn't keep my water warm at all in fact i have like one of those heating pads for like my own body and i wrap it around the tank at night just so it's heated so having a thermometer can help monitor where your tank temperature is at um i definitely look at that like every single time i look at stella um i just want to make sure that the water is consistently hot not hot you know what I mean. Okay, first of all, <laughs> beta fish tanks need to be in between 75 to 82 degrees, always, um, never below, never above. They're tropical fish, so they need kind of more warmer water than other fish. The heater doesn't turn on until the water goes below a certain temperature, so always have a heater. I mean, I don't know what else to say. Next thing you will need for your beta fish tank is all the decorations um, and there are some requirements for those as well. So this one's kind of optional. Um, this is your substrate so if it's gravel, if it's sand, if it's something that is at the bottom of your tank. Um, sometimes this is optional, some people don't put gravel down. Um, I think that's just kind of a personal preference. When you are buying your substrate, you wanna make sure that you're not buying um, like really sharp stones or something like that, something that could potentially hurt your fish's tails and fins. The substrate that I'm currently using is from PetSmart. I think it's like, I don't even know what it's called, honestly. Moving on, plants are always a staple piece in a fish tank, whether that is real plants or if it's silk plants or if it's plastic plants. I definitely recommend staying away from the plastic plants. Um, it might be all that you have, but you definitely want to make sure that those plastic plants or any plant is not sharp enough to then again hurt your beta. One way to check if your decorations are safe for your beta fish is the nylon test. So basically you get nylon tights um, and you kind of rub it against the plant or the gravel or decoration or whatever. And if it rips, it's not safe. That's going to happen to your beta spin and it's not going to be pretty. Um, so definitely go and get a different kind of decoration before putting your beta in that tank. If you didn't know this already, beta fish like to lounge on things, lay on things. Um, they're swimming all day. Um, so another decoration that I have bought is the beta hammock. It is a plastic leaf, but there are no sharp edges or anything like that. And it's made for beta fish, so you know it's going to be safe. But always double check. Another necessity for a beta fish tank is to have a ornament or a hidey hole or basically just a decoration where a beta fish can hide in it preferably or at least behind it or something like that. Beta fish really love to hide in things. They don't like it to be out all the time. They don't like to be seen all the time. So having that own private space for them is definitely necessary, especially in smaller tanks. Speaking of that, my decoration that was shown and what you just saw broke. I was so upset. It freaking fell and it broke right in front of me and I was so upset. Also definitely check out my Instagram if you wanna see some insider things like that. Also, personally, in my beta fish tank, I like to get a Marimo moss ball. They're super cute, super tiny, and they can stick anywhere in your tank. You know, they don't take up too much room, but they definitely help your tank a lot. And yeah, it's not too expensive, so I definitely recommend getting one if you have space in your tank because it's cute. Um, but yes, those are all the things that I believe your fish tank definitely needs. Um, so here's how you do it. <laughs> Here's how you put it all together. 
if anything's new or even if it's used you want to make sure that it's completely washed off you want to get off all of the dust and debris that it might have collected so if you buy something from PetSmart you want to wash it off because you do not know how long it's been sitting there and how many people have touched it so definitely wash it off in warm water once everything is washed off you want to put it inside your tank so you want to put the gravel in you want to put your plants in beta hammocks thermometer everything like that in all the decorations inside your tank and then you obviously want to fill your tank up with water it kind of doesn't matter what type of water you use as long as you have it dechlorinated and conditioned once you put all of your water in you want to put in your filter and your heater follow the directions of whatever they say so for example my heater said to keep it in the water for 30 minutes before turning it on that way the heater kind of gets adjusted to the temperature of the water and then it knows how to turn on and stuff like that. If this is a new tank, you wanna make sure that your tank is cycled before you put your beta fish in it. Cycling your tank can kind of be a long and hard process. It's a little complicated. Just know that I have a video out there explaining it. <laughs> a brief summary of it, not the whole thing. After your fish tank has cycled, you can put your beta fish in the tank. Make sure that the beta fish is acclimated to the water temperature. So for example, if it's in one of those cups, layer in there and then make sure that that water is getting used to that water, if you understand what I mean. Let it out very softly and boom. You have set up your beta fish tank the correct way, hopefully. Oh my gosh, I'm like scared that I like forgot to say something or I said something accidentally wrong. Hopefully this video is a little better than my last video that I made a couple years ago that had a lot of complaints on it. Oh yes, and I didn't give a proper introduction, but yes, Stella is my new beta fish. She's a baby beta girl. Um, she's adorable. I love her and she loves food. She loves her food. So... But overall, that is my video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope to see you next week when I upload a new video, hopefully. Yay! Okay, I'm gonna go now. Bye! <laughs>